once you have a little bit of a better idea of where it is, then I think you can decide, well, how much time do we have? Do we have time to start switching the food a little bit more? Do we have time for other types of therapies? Or God forbid, if it's involved a significant amount of, of the stomach, then maybe it would be more just palliative type care and doing things just to keep them as comfortable as possible. Welcome to Dog Cancer Answers, where we help you help your dog with cancer. Here's your host, James Jacobson. Hello, friend, and thank you for joining us today. Here's a question that a lot of us struggle with when our dog has cancer. What do we do when we've already done most of what we can do? Today's caller is near the end of the prognosis state for her dog's hemangiosarcoma, and now there is a new symptom to wonder about. How should she handle it when she already knows that she doesn't have many options left? To help answer her question, we have Dr. Trina Hazard joining us. Dr. Trina is a veterinary oncologist who practices just outside of Los Angeles. She's also co-founder of the Veterinary Cannabis Society. Dr. Trina, welcome and let's take a listen to our caller whose name is Sharon. Hello, my name is Sharon and I'm from New Jersey. My dog, who is 12 years old and is a quirky, had a surgery on June 24th to remove a uh, hemangiosarcoma tumor that was quite large. It was 19 centimeters by 15 centimeters, and they also had to remove one adrenal gland and one kidney at the same time. He has been doing great. I've changed up his diet, tremendous uh, change. They recommended the surgeon uh, did not get all the borders, was not able to remove everything of the tumor. He had no chemo or anything else, but the surgeon recommended turkey tail mushrooms. So I researched mushrooms and I have them on turkey tail. I have them on a blend of seven different uh, mushrooms. I also have them on Everpop uh, vitamin and I've changed his food to organic canned dog food. He was on a dry, um, a good dog food, but after reading, I thought the canned would be better. I give him vegetables, pumpkin, fish oil in his food. So he's doing really great. The only thing is, and this is my question, it just started a week ago. He has like a gag. Nothing comes up, but he does it maybe four times a day, you know, hours in between. And so I'm wondering, I have not had any other testing done because he can't have any more surgery. But uh, I'm wondering, you know, I did get the whole report that his prognosis is not really good with that hemangiosarcoma, um, that they told me the tumor would come back in three to four months and they have no idea where it would come back and that it's in the blood. So my thinking is maybe it's his lung, I'm not sure. My question is, what can I do? Dr. Trina. Thank you for your question and I'm sorry to hear about your pop. I think hemangiosarcoma unfortunately is just so stupid aggressive. And you know, especially if you don't get it all right, it's tough because Even when a surgeon says, you know, we got all of it, we got margins, I'll just tell you this, not just to make you feel better, but to tell you, even when you get all the margins, there's usually what they call microscopic disease, meaning leftover little bits of cancer. And it can be in many, many places. The liver, in your case, I'm assuming that it was primarily of the spleen initially, and then maybe involved the kidney or the adrenal gland, which is why they removed it. I am a little concerned about the gagging. I don't know if it's it's lung as much as it's something going on in the abdomen. And we know that's where the disease was initially. So I think it would be worthwhile getting an ultrasound just to see where you are from a disease status perspective. Has it started to involve the stomach, let's say, 
And once you have a little bit of a better idea of where it is, then I think you can decide, well, how much time do we have? Do we have time to start switching the food a little bit more? Do we have time for other types of therapies? Or God forbid, if it's involved a significant amount of, of the stomach, then maybe it would be more just palliative type care and doing things just to keep them as comfortable as possible. Another thing that I honestly think works sometimes is Pepsid AC. Like I know it doesn't make sense why Pepsid sometimes works so well for animals, but, and I find it in cats, it can also work wonderfully. But when animals are just gagging or, or regurging, sometimes Pepsid AC can work really well. And you can speak to your veterinarian about that and dosages and so forth. That's an easy fix, right? And then an anti-nausea medication could also be helpful in helping prevent some of the gagging. And I would speak to your vet about that. Obviously, my interest is with cannabis medicine. And I think cannabinoids can absolutely be helpful in anti-nausea and anti-pain. So if there's anti-inflammatory, so if there is a component of discomfort for the cancer, say, coming back, and it's eliciting some sort of nausea response, then I think cannabis could be very helpful for that. There's a website called veterinarycannabis.org. You can go on there and have actually an indirect consult with me through that website. And I'm happy to give you some information through there. They have what they call a veterinary cannabis counselor who will you'll end up speaking to, but I can give them some information through them. And then another person I was thinking while you were speaking was there is an integrative oncologist in Red Bank in New Jersey. And I heard you're in New Jersey named Dr. Kendra Pope, who is lovely. Like she is just the sweetest and smartest. And she practices, it's almost all more integrative practice with no chemo. And if so, it'd be just kind of pills or something like that. But she would be able to give you a little bit more of an insight after seeing your pup doing a, a holistic exam, like a specific a Chinese herbal exam to give you ideas if there's any certain Chinese herbs that might be able to help support your pup. From a food perspective, I would try to do as bland as you can especially with this type of gagging, you know, make sure that it's something that is easily digestible. And I love the idea of that you're doing veggies. I think it's great, but just make sure they're at least steamed. They're not raw because that might be a little bit difficult mm. for them to, you know, really digest carefully. I honestly really think your turkey tail is a phenomenal idea. We do that. I oftentimes do Chinese herbs along with mushroom therapy for my hemangiosarcoma cases. Dr. Pope would be able to speak with you a little bit more about Chinese herbs, about vitamin D. We do a lot of vitamin D evaluation and supplementation with hemangiosarcoma. But I think really getting an idea of where the disease status is will be very helpful to help give you an idea on time because I'd hate for you to do all this stuff and maybe we don't have that much time. Or let's be positive and say things are actually looking okay. Some of this other stuff can be implemented fairly quickly and hopefully be able to prolong the quantity, but also the quality. And it all starts with an ultrasound, which is a pretty simple thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would do an ultrasound. And I think it's reasonable to do x-rays if you're worried about the lungs, if he's coughing or doing any of that. But I think an ultrasound will give you more information right now. Well, Sharon, thank you for your call. Dr. Trina Hazah, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. We will be right back after a short break with more information about how to find a good veterinarian in your area to help you with your dog's cancer, no matter what stage it's in. We'll be right back. I want to let you know about an important newsletter. It's called Dog Cancer News. Now, with a name like that, it is not for everyone. But if your dog has cancer, you will want to subscribe. That's because every issue features articles that will be helpful, such as low-carb dog cancer diet recipes, new clinical trials, financial resources to help pay for cancer care, information on supplements, and lots of other helpful info that your veterinarian may not know or have the time to share with you. Also, when you subscribe to Dog Cancer News, you will get a weekly update on the topics covered on this podcast, along with links and resources. So how much does Dog Cancer News cost? Well, today, you can subscribe for free. It's our gift. For a limited time, you can get a full year's subscription for free. No strings attached. Just go to this website to sign up for the newsletter now, dogcancernews.com. It takes less than 10 seconds to subscribe, and it is totally free. Do it now at dogcancernews.com. <coughs> 
We are back with a reminder about an important resource for you on our companion website, which is dogcancerblog.com. Dr. Trina specifically recommends a holistic veterinarian to Sharon, and we'll be sure to put her name and contact information in the show notes for today's episode. Dr. Trina's recommendation also reminded me about how many other wonderful resources we have for you. There are several articles on Dog Cancer Blog about how to find and interview veterinarians, whether you want to find a brand new one or get a second opinion. There's also a really important article where readers of Dr. Dressler's book, The Dog Cancer Survival Guide, do what Dr. Trina just did and make a specific recommendation for a vet in their area. Dr. Dressler's book is our show's main sponsor, and in it, he describes what he calls the full spectrum approach to dog cancer. And all the veterinarians you hear on Dog Cancer Answers are basically full spectrum veterinarians. They're open minded and they're non dogmatic, pardon the pun, but they are. They're non dogmatic. They embrace methods and treatments that have evidence working for them, even if some of the things that they recommend are considered quote unquote outside the box. So that means that these veterinarians work with food and supplements and conventional methods like surgery or chemotherapy or radiation in addition to food and supplements and other things. At least they aren't opposed to using traditional standard of care practices. These full spectrum veterinarians like to use whatever has been shown to help, even if it comes from another tradition of medicine. And in the article that is linked to in the show notes for today's episode, you will find dozens and dozens of veterinarians who, according to readers of Dr. D's book, are just like the ones you hear on this podcast. They're open-minded and they're willing to work with you to try things that may not seem conventional. They cover the full spectrum of treatments. You can find that article as well as several others and links to the Veterinary Cannabis Society in the show notes to today's episode. Those are in your podcast app and they can also be found on our website, which is dogcanceranswers.com. That is where you will find all of our back catalog of shows as well. Take a look through our back catalog on our website or on YouTube or in your podcast app because with cancer being the number one killer of dogs, it's likely that you will need to listen to some or several of those episodes or at least someone you know and love will. So don't hesitate. In fact, I encourage you, please tell a friend about Dog Cancer Answers and also tell your veterinarian about the show especially if they have a full spectrum approach. We keep hearing that veterinarians are using this podcast to keep up to date. And we're so happy about that. Also, please rate and review this show in your podcast app of choice. And by all means, sign up for Dog Cancer News. That is our amazing free newsletter. You can do that at the website dogcancernews.com. That is it for today's show. I'm James Jacobson, and as always, on behalf of everyone here at Dog Podcast Network, we wish you and your dog a very warm aloha. Thank you for listening to Dog Cancer Answers. If you'd like to connect, please visit our website at dogcanceranswers.com or call our listener line at 808-868-3200. And here's a friendly reminder that you probably already know. This podcast is provided for informational and educational purposes only. It's not meant to take the place of the advice you receive from your dog's veterinarian. Only veterinarians who examine your dog can give you veterinary advice or diagnose your dog's medical condition. Your reliance on the information you hear on this podcast is solely at your own risk. If your dog has a specific health problem, contact your veterinarian. Also, please keep in mind that veterinary information can change rapidly. Therefore, some information may be out of date. Dog Cancer Answers is a presentation of Maui Media in association with Dog Podcast Network. 